This show fuses magic, suggestion, psychology, misdirection, and showmanship. If you watch my show live on Wednesday night, you'll have seen me correctly predict the National Lottery. Tonight, I'll show you how I did it. Thank you. On Wednesday, on Wednesday, I was handsome enough to predict Her Majesty's Lottery live on television. Uh, I didn't profit in any way from it, as Channel 4 didn't allow me to buy a ticket. Uh, but it's been fantastic reading all the conspiracies and speculations around at the moment. Lasers writing numbers onto the balls and moving them somehow, and split screens and balls with special LED readouts and impossible sleight of hand. But if you missed it, here's what it looked like. The BBC broadcasts the lottery, the lottery draw, absolutely live, 100% live, to the second. We are doing the same here. And when I turn the television on, uh, when I'm allowed to, uh, I'll get a, a nod in a second when I, when I can do that, um, you can flick back and forward between the BBC and this one to see that we are absolutely live and in sync with the BBC. The most you'll get is like a tiny whisker of a delay, about a second, because we're taking a BBC feed, essentially, and then passing it through Channel 4 to get to you, and that takes about a second or so. But the BBC are live, 100% live. The lottery draw is live. We are 100% live here. Um, I'm being told there's a little bit, of, little bit, about 30 seconds before we can uh, turn the television on. Um, I should say this is the culmination of like a year's uh, obsession over this. I've had lottery numbers all up over the wall of my house. Um, I'm feeling uh, a little bit sick. Please wish me luck, and if it goes wrong, as I'm after five out of the six, if it goes wrong, I'll only get a couple or none at all, I'm really sorry, and I'll, I'll apologise about that in, in advance. I'm really sorry, but this, this hopefully, hopefully will work. Again, I've done nothing illegal. Uh, I've done nothing illegal. There's, there's nothing that will affect your chances of doing this, and there'll be a show on Friday at nine o'clock showing you how I did this as well, so you can watch that, you can find out how I did it, and if you like, uh, you might want to try the same thing too. Uh, we can turn the TV on, we can turn the TV on. So, this will come on in a second. You can flick between the BBC and Channel 4 if you want. This will warm up in a second to uh, see that this is absolutely live. Um, and uh, here we go. God. So, this is from Lottery HQ. Um, uh, oh, this is, still, this, this is still the dream number, isn't it? Okay, so... This is, uh, this is just, oh no, no, this is it, this is it, this is it. It's not the dream number, we're now into it. So, yes, here we come from the rather shiny, lovely studio of the BBC that they call Lottery HQ. They have a glamorous assistant every week to help present. This week's glamorous assistant is O.J. Borg. There he is. And uh, the jab got there, oh, 2,000, 2 million rather, 400,000. That's, uh, that's, that's quite exciting. Uh, there it is, there's the draw master with the white gloves. Oh, the balls are down, the voice is the voice of Alan Delicate. Uh, the voice of the balls, this is an initial production for the BBC and the National Lottery Commission. I'm required to say that. that that's a close-up there, so you can see there's no tampering going on. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, Dallin Dedicate there, the voice of the balls. Uh, hope you're talking you through them. And and he's about to press the big red shiny button that they press to make uh, a lot of people very rich. Uh, there's been 2,000. Oh, there he goes. He's gone. He's gone. Oh, gone. One, number 23. Let's not forget, to date, National Lottery players have raised over £23 billion for the good causes. Next up is number 35, with his last Wednesday night as well, that 183rd time as a main ball, and the third to be drawn. Out she comes, that's number 11. Drawn the Wednesday before last two, you'll recall if it's one of your chosen few, 225th Lotto outing. Here's the next one. And that is number 28. Don't forget that of every pound spent on the National Lottery, around 28 pence goes for the good causes. Next out is number 39. We've seen it over the last two Saturday nights as well. Two and fifth lotto outing for that one. And the sixth one that could make you very rich is right there, number two. Fourth number joining this last weekend. That little beauty, 180th time it's been a main ball. The bonus tonight is... Number 15. So, Millionaire's Row midweek uh, looks like this in a second. Bonus ball order. doesn't matter, we're not we're not two. involved in the bonus ball. So in order 11. we have oh, 2, 11, 23, 28, 28 
35 and 39. Those are the lottery numbers for this week, 2, 11, 23, 28, 35 and 39. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, my prediction for the lottery numbers this week are 2, 11, 23, 28, 35, 39 in numerical order. Those are the numbers. <laughs> That's a year of my life right there. I hope you can see those. 2, 11, 23, 28, 35 and 39. Thank you. Um, thank you. So, there are a lot of questions I get frequently asked. What am I thinking? Why are you in my garage? And so on. Uh, one question, however, I would hear more than any other was, go on then, what are the lottery numbers? Go on then, what are they? What are the lottery numbers? And I'd always say, shush, shush, we're supposed to be having sex. <laughs> but having been asked so many times, I started thinking about it, and I thought to myself, how would you go about predicting the lottery? So ignoring the bonus ball, which is mainly for women and gays, how do you predict six random numbers spat out by a machine? My chances of correctly guessing at random are the same as anyone else's, one in 14 million, which is an interesting statistic. If you're a healthy middle-aged man, the chances of you dying over the course of the next year are roughly one in a thousand. Therefore, the chances of you dying in any given hour are one in nine million. So that means if you're sat at home with your lottery ticket an hour before they do the draw, you are more likely to be dead before they <laughs> announce the numbers than you are to win. I needed a better strategy. As I saw it, there are three ways to predict the lottery. One, fake a lottery ticket. Two, genuinely predict the numbers. And three, fix the machine. I disregarded the first option. Faking a ticket wasn't the same thing. It seemed to lack imagination and it would be illegal. So maybe there was a way of predicting the numbers. This was to lead me down a fascinating path into mathematics, superstition, and a powerful, beautiful secret that can only be achieved when we all put our heads together. See you after the break. Wednesday night, I predicted the lottery. Today, I'll show you how I did it. So the question is, how do you predict a machine's random outcome? I knew I could certainly predict people's random choices, so I took that as my starting point. Be honest. Put your hands up if you don't like mice. Put your hands up if you don't like mice. Good, a hand going up there. Hello, come up here for me. What's your name? Um, What's your Charlotte. name? Charlotte. Charlotte, lovely to meet you. You don't like mice? No. Come sorry. with me, come with me. <laughs> Um, so, Charlotte, thank you. Charlotte, first of all, be honest. Do you just sort of not like mice very much? Or are you properly Mickey-phobic? Um, I don't like them at all. Well, this is the game. Um, there are four boxes. There's a mouse in one of the boxes. I put a mouse in one of them, but there are no mice in the other three, okay? The game is, you've got to put your hand into three of the boxes and have a route around through the little holes on this side here. Um, but only three, and I'm hoping, and I presume you are too, that the three you put in are the three without the mouse in, so that you'll miss the one with the mouse in. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. That's what I'm hoping will happen. I put it into okay. the one that I think you will avoid. Okay. okay. Now, a couple of things. First of all, it's very important that your choices are entirely random. So, um, if you think I'm trying to influence you, or if you've already sort of got numbers in your head and ideas as you look at them, now just disregard that. It's very important you make utterly random decisions as you're doing it, and feel free to change your mind as many times as you like before you make a decision. And also, just so you know that I can't somehow move a mouse around from box to box, uh, there are these numbered cards, one, two, three, four, and um, they're all blank on the other side, apart from the one that corresponds to the mouse box, and that's got a little picture of the mouse on the other side of the number, just so you know we can't change any of the ground or move it. So, you begin with a one in four chance of getting the mouse. Which one are you going to go for? One, two, three or four? Entirely up to you. Please make sure it's random. Three. Three. Are you sure? Yes. Happy that's random? Yes. Okay. Well, this is how we're going to play. Get your hand ready, but don't put it in yet. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and I'm going to reveal what's inside to the audience first. All right? Okay. But I don't want you looking. You must keep your eyes okay. closed. All right. Close your eyes. Your eyes closed. I'd like you to put your hand in. Keep your eyes closed. Put your hand in. Have a feel around. Make sure 
go right into the corners because they can hide. You can open your eyes. There's no mouse. It's just droppings, but there was no mouse! There was no mouse. No mouse there. Uh, and of course, uh, there was no mouse. There was no mouse in the box. Number three. Um, there was no mouse in box number three, so congratulations. Uh, why don't you like them? What is it about mice that you don't like? My mum made me terrified as a child. Oh, really? And now I just don't like the peel or the look or the move, the sudden movement. They scamper, don't they? Yeah. They do scamper and bite. OK, um, so you now have one, two and four left. You've got a one in three chance. Which one are you going to go for next? Remember, it has to be random, so feel free to change your mind as many times as you like. One. OK, all right, so come here for me. Um, so that'll be uh, box number one. So get ready and I'll remove the cloth first. So anybody else? Yes, close your eyes. No, you can open your eyes. There's no mouse, it's just some fruit for the mouse light. But there's no mouse. No mouse at all, congratulations. Uh, no mouse, no mouse in box number one. There was no mouse. All right, you are now, however, down to the last two. Um, box number two and box number four. So it's mainly the way they kind of move around and... Yes. So I, I like them, I think they're fascinating creatures. Mice, I didn't know this, mice can uh, live for up, up to three days in a human intestine. I find that quite interesting. Um, so, number two or number four? You've got a 50-50 chance this is the last one, which you're going to go with number two or number four? The last one you're going to put your hand in. Two. Are you sure? Yes. Change your mind if you like? No, I'll stick with two. You're going to stick with number yes, two? Please. All right, well, it's only 50-50 now, so the odds are no longer in your favour. Come and stand here for me. Okay. Get ready with your hand. Sure, 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 sure. I'm sure. Okay, all right. Eyes closed, good. No peeking. Audience. No, in you go. Oh, sorry, no, you. I think I'm okay. Okay. You can open your eyes. There was no mouse in number no. two either. She got the three without the mouse. Nothing in number two either. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, would you like, while you were here, would you like to see our little mouse? He's, I'll see it definitely. But he's quite friendly. I'll, I'll just come in and have a look. He's, he's perfectly friendly. Oh, he's not there, no? He must have got out. Oh, there he is. Come on, <laughs> no, he wasn't there. There is no mouse. There was no mouse. There was no mouse at all. <laughs> However, it was important to get you frightened. Important to get you thinking that there was a mouse there, because it's only by getting you into that state that I can make you fall into a predictable pattern, uh, which is exactly what you did, and you did it absolutely brilliantly. You left box number four, and uh, box number four, of course, was the mouse box number four. Even though there was no mouse, you went for the correct one. You left number four. Well done. Thank you. Now, excellent. So, well done. Now. With fear comes suggestibility, and it's easy for me to manipulate your decisions for you when you're in a heightened state, like one of fear. But remember, this is just my starting point for predicting randomness. We're still dealing with people, not machines, and this is only one in four. But let's up the stakes. Here's an example of predicting human randomness when the odds are one in 20, and this time with real jeopardy. You got off lightly. I want to see how far fear can increase predictability, so I've had to call in medical backup for this test. Our volunteer Matt is about to face something far scarier than a pretend mouse. Matt, I'll explain the game. There are down there 20 polystyrene cups like this, upturned, yeah? They're numbered on the top, so you've got 1 to 5, yeah. and then 6 to 10, 11 to 15, and 16 to 20. You're going to go and stamp on 14 out of the 20, so you can leave 6 untouched, yeah? One of those cups has a knife underneath. In fact, here's a replica. That's what you're avoiding. Yeah. Um, if it goes wrong, yeah. and you do get a knife through your foot, which we both want to avoid, then uh, how much money would you demand to stick a knife through your foot? Through my foot? Um, at least, I don't know, 500,000. Five hundred thousand pounds. Mm, yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm writing out a check for five hundred thousand uh, pounds in case Matt fails my test and requires compensation. 
a bit nervous now. Mm-hmm. Uh, hang on to that if you like, stick it in your pocket. Earlier, I placed the knife under a cup okay. whose number I calculated Matt would instinctively avoid. If I'm wrong, the paramedics get to do more than stand and watch, and Matt gets £500,000 compensation. Might be a bit cold. <laughs> okay, they also need to clean your feet to uh, just sterilise there. Also, just need to give you a tetanus, all right, because uh, obviously, what's going to happen? Predicting Matt's random choices is a starting point for predicting the random outcome of the lottery. You're leaving six untouched. Can I just ask you one more time if you're happy to do this? I'm happy to do it, yeah. OK. In your own time, then. There you go. That's number one. That's two. In this game, as he stamps on the cups, Matt has a 70% chance of getting a knife through his foot. Seven, you're halfway through. You've only got to do another seven. Yep, that's fine. Come. You scared the life out of me then. Nine. <sighs> you got four more. <laughs> Three left. <laughs> Two more. You've only got to do one more. Sure? No. Well done. <laughs> oh, God. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, these six that are left, which is one, 12, 13, 14, and 15, and 18, that's random, isn't it? Those are decisions that you were making as you were going yeah. on, in terms of you leaving those six there. Yeah. yeah. Those numbers are, uh, I'd like to think of them as your lucky numbers. <laughs> Don't ever forget them. Number one, 12, 13, 14, 15, and, uh, and 18. The reason why I'm drawing attention to those is because of what's written on the back of the check that I gave you when we were up there. Uh, you've got it, haven't you? You've got the check. Have you still got it on you? There's a check, yeah. Yeah. Peep, undo the envelope. Now, if you read out what's on the back, I want the camera to be able to see it over your shoulder. On the back there, of the check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will leave 1, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 18. 1, 12, 12 13, 13, 14, 14 15, and 18. And 1, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 18. I'm going to take this back now because uh, thank you very much. I'm just wondering whether you want to carry on because that's quite a lot of money. Well, look, it's not under 18. Look, you've only got four left to do now. That still stands. I will carry on. Go on then. Three left. You've got to stamp on two of the final three, leaving one cup untouched. <laughs> Last one. At this point, Matt has a 50-50 chance of stabbing a knife through his foot. Sure.
Congratulations again. So, I have to admit to you, the only way that I could do this and uh, know that you'd be safe, predict the six that you would not stamp on was to get you into a state of fear. That was what that was all about. That made you fall into a certain predictable pattern. There was no knife under any of the cups. All right? The uh, injection we gave you was not a tetanus, it was just a saline solution, which is perfectly safe. You're fine. You would never have got hurt. Uh, you wouldn't have got hurt, but Jenny would have got hurt. I'll show you Jenny. Look, number 13 you didn't touch. And there <laughs> is Jenny. Now, I was nervous, obviously, because uh, I'm sitting there thinking there's a chance I'm going to get a knife from foot and then my adrenaline was going a bit but I'm shocked that the numbers the six that were left were the numbers written on the back of the check that's pretty amazing thank you we actually have Matthew with us tonight in the audience thank you Matthew thank you very much thank you so <clears throat> thank you so far so good people's random decisions can be predicted but I knew that because people can be influenced. The question is, could a machine be influenced? Now, I thought that was a non-starter and impossible because obviously machines can't think, they don't have minds. However, I then read about an amazing experiment that took place in the 1980s by the Pear Group. The experiment was to see if willpower could affect randomness. It involved a bagatelle board like this. And balls were dropped in from the top and the idea is they would randomly drop down and could end up anywhere along the bottom. However, the scientists had a load of people will the balls to end up on one particular side to try to psychically influence the direction of the balls as they dropped. And a curious result emerged. More balls did indeed end up on the side that the people were willing them to fall on. Willpower did seem to make a small but significant difference. But I wanted to try the idea for myself. Could a group of people influence, for example, the toss of a coin? Have a look at this. Can a group of people influence the toss of a coin? I got a group together and chose a volunteer. He would be trying to throw his chosen combination of three heads or tails. If you were to toss a normal coin three times in a row, there are eight different possible combinations of heads and tails that you can get up. So these are the eight possible combinations. You're going to choose one of these for yourself, and I'll also choose a combination uh, for me. I'll let you choose first, so which one do you want? Triple H. Triple H, you're gonna give this one here. All right, so Martin is gonna go for heads, heads, heads. Well, my lucky one is uh, tails, heads, heads, so I'll go for that one. Here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna be tossing a coin. If your combination comes up first of heads, 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 that is a point to you. If my combination comes up of tails, heads, heads, then that's a point to me, all right? So I can't cheat. Another volunteer is chosen to flip for my team, the Reds. The rest of the group would make up the red team. This is to help you support. Your red team. The Reds get dressed up and will be cheering in support for their red team. Martin, however, is all on his own. Excellent, so red team, you know what you're doing. It is up to you to make this happen, to use your energy and your willpower to make Angela win for her combination to come up more than Martin's. They can switch coin at any time from the hundreds in the box to keep it fair. So Martin's chosen heads, 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 and Angela is trying to flip tails, heads, heads. This is important. Martin and Angela's combinations are exactly as likely to come up as each other. There should be no difference. They'll take turns tossing the coin until one of their chosen combinations comes up, and then that person gets a point. The first person to 10 wins. That is one point to our team. Well done, one point to the red team. As they're doing this, I want you guys really focusing on the coin. Will it, in your mind, what seems to help is just saying that combination again. Tells her, just in your mind, again and again. With the red team willing her to win, Angela soon scores again. Heads, that's the second one. And again. Heads, we have another point, we have another point to Angela. With the red team behind her, there's no stopping Angela. Heads. Five plus five nil, Martin. Oh man. It seems that the combined win power of the red team does have an influence on the toss of the coin. Okay. Martin manages to get one winning combination. Hands, he's won a point! Martin, you won a point! Boo! But with her team behind her, Angela steams ahead to 10 points. Hey. It's a hands! We have won! Well done, red team! Oh, Martin!
cut it. You know, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. It was all against me, I was just on my own. Me personally, I do believe um, in psychic ability. So the fact that I had a team behind me willing me to win um, enabled me to actually do so. Thank you. So that seems like real evidence for the Bagatelle experiment, yes? Well, not quite. It does seem like the Bagatelle experiment probably doesn't hold up. And as for the coin, it's not psychic. It's a kind of deep maths. And the kind of deep maths is going to help me with the lottery prediction. I'm going to explain how the coin trick works to you so that you can go out, place a bet yourself, and win every time. Here's what you do. Ask the other person to make their choice first. This isn't courtesy, it is vital. And from what he says, you work out what you'll say. Now you do this by taking the middle one of his three, reversing it, and putting it at the start. So if he says heads, 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 you would take the middle head, reverse it to a tails, put it at the beginning. You'll have tails, then heads, heads, and then you ignore the last one. You then play just as we have, and you'll see you win more times than the other person does. And for further information, you can go to the Channel 4 website on this. Why does this work? Why this works will be an hour program in itself, but suffice it to say, it has nothing to do with willpower or psychic ability. It is deep maths. But this deep maths finds predictability in randomness. Just think about that for a second. It is taking something as random as a fair toss of a coin and finding predictability in it. Could I apply that to the lottery? For months, I lived with a year's worth of lottery numbers written up across a wall in my house, trying to think of how you could make predictions from randomness. And then, late one evening, I was having a bowl of oxtail soup, love it, and a memory of something I'd read hit me. In 1906, a scientist called Francis Galton stumbled across a bizarre phenomenon at a country fair. 800 members of the public competed to guess the weight of a prize ox that was on display and the person who got closest won. But after it was all over, Galton worked out the average guess. In other words, he added up all the estimations and divided by the number of guesses and the result was the exact weight of the ox. As groups, we make far better decisions than experts on their own ever do. This real phenomenon with huge implications has been called the wisdom of crowds. So, keeping an open mind, I got a group of people together to try the same theory with the lottery. The idea was to have them look at lottery numbers from over the last year and have them guess which ones would come next and then work out the mean average of their guesses. If there were a pattern, as a group, they would unconsciously find it even though none of them would know individually what that pattern was. So, two Saturdays ago, 24 volunteers, here they are, they all studied the chart and wrote down what they thought the next six lottery numbers would be. Then we wanted to get the average guess for each ball. So they'd all been asked to bring calculators with them and they added up their guesses for each ball and divided by 24 the number of people making guesses. Does that make sense? Yes. We ended up with six numbers and then the group went out and they played those numbers that evening. Guess how many of the numbers were correct? One. Two, one. It was one. It was rubbish. Um, so I was ready to ditch the whole idea, but then I thought I'd give it one more go, this time changing one factor. Could emotions, like greed or the anticipation of winning, psychologically get in the way of picking the right numbers? Does the emotion behind wanting to win somehow stop you from winning? We all got together to give it another go. To avoid the greed factor and hopefully get a better result, I asked our 24 volunteers to guess the next six lottery numbers and write them down, but we would not do the maths till after the lottery result had been announced. Again, they studied the previous year's worth of draws and went with their instincts. What would the next six numbers be? Everybody writes down what they think the first ball will be, so we can add them up and divide by 24 to get the average for ball number one and then we'll do the same with ball number two, and so on. The front row came up to represent the six balls and they noted everyone's guesses. 11. 44. 26. 19. 40. 33. 18. 24. 27. Then we watched the lottery, the moment of truth. Does anybody else like 
Now we haven't got the necessary clearance to show you the lottery results that we were watching, but look online if you want to check this draw's results. It was Wednesday, the 2nd of September. The eight. Seven. Four. Two. 37. 35. Good. So you've each got a list of numbers for each ball. Uh, you're going to add them all up now and divide by 24, which is the number of people in this room. Uh, so off you go. So our six number crunchers were now working out the average of everyone's guesses. We waited for the results of the calculations. Would they match the lottery numbers that had been drawn? So, Terry, uh, will you first of all turn around what you have? You have number 19, which is not one of the balls in tonight's lottery. Uh, Eleanor, will you please turn around yours? 23 was also not in tonight's lottery. Sally, will you please turn yours around? Sally has 28, which was in tonight's lottery. A round of applause. Rachel, will you turn yours around? 24. No, again, there is no 24. Um, Neela, can you turn yours around, please? We have 35. That's two out of six. And Kevin, turn yours around. 27. We have three out of six numbers. We have three. After the first session, when we just got one, I was really surprised at how we got three this time, so that's really exciting. I was just really impressed that we got the other three numbers, so it's kind of a good moving forward from, from last Saturday. Maybe it's different now that we've seen the result. Um, and we got through the ball, so now maybe we feel more like a, a group and we can do. It is promising, you know I mean? Now seeing this, it's like, come on team, <laughs> we got this in the bag. <laughs> And they would have literally won £10 between the 24 of them. Uh, so that was a great start. But how was I going to predict all six balls? I'll tell you after the break. Thank you. Good evening. Tonight. Tonight, I'm showing you how you can predict the National Lottery by taking you through how I did it on Wednesday. Using the wisdom of crowds phenomenon, a group of 24 volunteers correctly guessed three out of six lottery numbers. I brought them back for another session to see if we could get any more right. I thought it'd be a good idea for them to get to know each other a little better first, so I sent them out for a bit of team bonding. <laughs> Our group shared in team building activities. This brought them closer together. Their individual psychological barriers dropped as they learned to relax in each other's company and this should lead to a better outcome for a lottery prediction. It was time to introduce my next technique. I'm gonna try something called automatic writing, which some of you may have heard of. It was a, it's a technique used by spiritualists quite a lot when they're supposedly channeling the dead. And this is about utterly detaching yourself from what your hand is doing and writing to the point that you're barely even aware of, of what you're writing. I got the group to practice the new method. Automatic writing has been attributed to the idiomotor effect, a psychological phenomenon where people make movements outside of their conscious control, which offer a clue as to their deepest feelings and processes. The signs were encouraging, but one subject, Tyler, found the technique tricky, so I removed him from the test and made him responsible for calculating the group's guesses instead. I then set the rest to work, predicting the lottery by using automatic writing. They were allowed to write minus numbers or numbers larger than 49, in fact, anything that came out of their hands. Tyler here up on the table, please. 
Thank you. I stand back so that Tyler can interpret the writing and begin the calculations while the lottery begins to play. Again, look online if you want to check this draw's results. It was Saturday the 5th of September. 36. I wrote down the results as the group watched them come up live on the television. 22. 12. 13. 26. As before, the totals for each ball were divided by the number of guesses, which in this case was 23. Divided by 23 equals... 63. Will the wisdom of crowds phenomenon combined with automatic writing be potent enough to give us a better result this time? 42. So we got one number around the wrong way and one number is one off. 22. We have one. Twelve. <laughs> Nineteen. Oh my no. Oh my God. If this last one is well. What does it come out to? So, go on, it's 598 divided by 23 equals... 26, 20, oh my god! Okay, 36, we got 63. 41, we got 42. So those two are, those two are wrong, but these are correct. We got 22, and this even the same order, 12, 19, and 26. Can't believe it. <laughs> when I was writing them down and everyone was getting excited, it didn't actually clue in at first that we were nailing some of these numbers. And to see 22, 12, 19, I was like, nah, it's not gonna happen, it's not. And to see it was really, it's not something that I believe in or I would never ever expect me to be so excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Four right in a row. Four right in a row. Possibly a coincidence, maybe, but I was very excited. Perhaps the key to predicting the lottery lies in the hands of groups of you working together, although annoyingly maybe it'll only work when you're not distracted by the possibility of profit. We had no more time to practice. The next time we would meet would be Wednesday, just gone the day of the live lottery prediction. After the break, all will be revealed. <laughs> Thank you. So, Wednesday night, these six random numbers came up live in the lottery, yet I knew what they would be beforehand, but not on my own. I had 24 very excited people hoping to predict them for me. This is what happened. It was the big night. This is what was going on around the corner in a secret location. The group assembled and studied the chart for the final time. Are you excited? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you've had a few minutes already to look at the... Uh... Again, I had them relax and use automatic writing to come up with the six numbers. Close your eyes now. Would the group's collective subconscious, the wisdom of the crowd, yield the results we were after? We didn't want them to know the numbers until the draw, so I performed the calculations by averaging out their guesses. I took the six correspondingly numbered balls from a box containing all of the numbers and sealed them in an opaque tube. The prediction was set. That's our first one. Um. <laughs> that is the lottery prediction. Okay, gotta go, gotta run, see you, bye. Oh, no.
down and uh, it's Wednesday the 9th of September 09. Tonight I'm going to try and predict at least five of the six lottery okay. numbers. So we're uh, broadcasting from a studio and for security. These here, this is my prediction. The house, um, I'm feeling uh, a little bit sick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we can turn the TV on, we can turn the TV on. <laughs> 2, 11, 23, 28, 35 and 39. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, my prediction... <laughs> uh, 2, 11, 23, 28, 35, 39... In numerical order, those are the numbers. That's the year of my life. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. I can't believe that we've just pulled six numbers out in front of the niche. It's amazing. I'm just completely shocked that I'm oh, just. Shocked. We saw him do all the balls and rain, it's live. All of us believing that we can do it is what made it happen. We've done what needed to be done, we pulled six numbers out. I think we're a brilliant team and um, I've, it's been a pleasure to work with all of you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That concludes the tale of how we reached Wednesday night. All of my 24 people who were there know what happened and the success they had. But it's quite possible that many of you simply won't believe it. You may choose not to believe any of what I've told you. Maybe you still believe it was some sort of super technology. Whatever you choose to believe is up to you. But there's still one route we haven't looked at. Remember the three options? One, to fake the ticket. Two, to predict the numbers. And there's still option three fix the lottery machine. So here's the option three explanation and you can decide which you prefer. <laughs> to fix the lottery, I would have to have done the following, which of course if I had done I could never admit to, so I certainly did not do any of these which would clearly be illegal, but if I did, which I didn't, of course I would have to have done the following. Firstly, get somebody working on the lottery show to act as an inside informant. We definitely did not do that. Secondly, because the balls are regularly checked, we'd have needed to have found a window of opportunity when the balls were not going to be checked so that we could do the stunt. Didn't do that either. <laughs> Next, we'd have got some special balls made which were identical to lottery balls but would weigh 100 grams. That's exactly 20 grams heavier than the real balls. We definitely did not get these made and certainly didn't get the necessary eight sets made. Next, we'd have found out from our informant where the balls were secretly stored in sealed containers. And to have got access to the containers, I'd have had to have hypnotised the security guards. My God, I certainly didn't do that. <laughs> then, I'd have added the weighted balls to each of the eight possible sets from which Wednesday's balls were going to be picked, and then sealed them back up. And on the night, the weighted balls that we didn't put in were certainly not picked up and spat out by the machine before any of the others. Then the day after the lottery, we'd have got our insider to go back and switch the weighted balls out and replace the ordinary ones, which he did not do. And that's how the lottery was predicted. Or not. It's ridiculous. <laughs> if I had fixed the lottery, which I did not, then I would have known ages ago what numbers would have come up and the guesses of the 24 people would have been meaningless. They could have picked any numbers they liked and I would have just switched their set of balls for the numbers that I knew were going to come up, i.e. the numbers on the heavier balls that I put into the machine. <laughs> But I would never admit to it, so if I'm ever asked how I predicted the lottery, I'm going to say it was just a trick. Good night.